Where do you think, give me an, give me an overall view of how you think you landed this plane? I, I mean, I'm actually, I'm very, very happy with, with where we are with Movie Maker. So, uh, as you know, the, the public beta uh, was complete in terms of the user interface and complete in terms of the engine, but was not complete in terms of the features and the functionality. And so a lot of the feedback we got was feedback like, hey, how come I can't do X, Y, Z? And so we spent some time throughout November to January uh, over you know, the, the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009, trying to kind of frame and determine and craft exactly what we were gonna do for the rest of the year. Uh, and so as part of that, we had an end-to-end -end, um, click-through, which is kind of an end-to-end -end prototype of the entire application by January. Uh, we had a, a vision document which said, here are the things we're committing to doing, here's what we expect people to say about what we're doing, uh, here's what the competition looks like, and here's why the decisions we're making are, are being made. Uh, and then we had, you know, obviously a bunch of development and testing in order to get to where we were, to where we are now. And that whole process takes time. And looking back on it, I mean, I'm thrilled with, with how the application turned out. I think it's very much a, a first version. We have a, a long ways to go. We have a lot of features we want to add. We have a lot of things we want to do. Uh, but given Given the team's execution, I'm incredibly excited about where we are. I think the team would just cranked to get this out and, and really make a, a difference in terms of the product we built. We weren't just doing a Me Too product. We, we really tried to take a step back and say, how do we simplify, simplify, simplify? Um, not to the point of being unusable. Really, we didn't want it to be uh, simplistic. We wanted it to be simple, and so I think there's a big difference there, and so we tried to kind of walk that fine line of not dumbing it down, but also um, making sure we're still approachable. Okay, and then how, uh, it, 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 coming from the outside, it, it's always, I mean, there, you have these decisions about uh, what goes in the product or, or what the vision is and stuff, and then you have the, the basic just can we code that? Can we make yep. this work? Kind of thing. Can you talk a little bit about about that kind of process and how how much how much of the decision making that you had to make was that's too hard to code before X ship date? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's always it's always that 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 trade off that you don't you know you can come up with all of the ideas in the world and this is why building software is so hard is we all use it every day and we all love it and you know we're we're kind of technology geeks and so. You want to do all of these things, but there's always finite resources, no matter what you're doing. Um, you know, even NASA has finite resources. And you get to this place where, no matter what you're doing, you have to say, "Well, we have to make really hard trade-offs and pick pick this instead of that." And what we tried to do is really look at it from a holistic scenario perspective. We wanted to make sure that everything we were doing had a start and an end, and that we weren't just doing features for the sake of a grab bag of features. Uh, there's a again, there's a lot of things we could do but we wanted to make sure kind of at the top level that everything strung together. And that when you installed the application and you started using it, not only did you have these delightful moments, uh, for example, things like the live preview support in the ribbon, which is one of my favorite things, to see how things are gonna look before you apply them. We wanted to have those delightful moments, but we also wanted to make sure that uh, we were able to take you know, five-star photos from photo gallery and take them all the way through to viewing them on YouTube. And that that ends up being kind of a very scenario-focused way to look at it instead of a, a feature-focused way. Great. And so uh, let's just talk a little bit about um, the, the specific product. And so you you fire up Windows Live Movement Maker. What's you, you talked a little bit about your favorite stuff, but mm -hmm. what are some things that we should be looking for? Maybe a couple of things that uh, we might not notice right off the bat that are kind of cool. Sure. Uh, I think the first thing you notice is obviously the, the new user interface, and I think there's a couple different aspects to that. One of them is this the new ribbon across the top, uh, which is part of Office 2007, obviously, and then also part of Word and or WordPad and uh, Paint in Windows 7. And so that ends up being a very kind of results-oriented um, and and a live way to look at the application. And so as you as you move through the application, you'll notice that some of the tabs change depending on where you are, depending on kind of that point in time. So if you happen to have music and photos, you'll have access to tools for both of those things depending on where you are in kind of uh, that point in time. And so the, the ribbon took a ton of iteration. It was one of those things that uh, you think you're going to get right on the first try and you never do. 
and we received a lot of feedback from from the office team and, and from the windows team about uh, you're, you think you're going to get it right, you're not, and so we, we went through rounds and rounds of usability testing uh, to make sure that, that, that the way that the tab layout works, where certain commands are within the tab set, all of that stuff we wanted to make sure was as intuitive as it can be. It's never going to be perfect, but we wanted it to be uh, a lot more intuitive. So that's kind of the first thing that I think people notice about the application. Uh, things aren't hidden in, in menus anymore. The, you know, we only have one menu. Uh, everything else is exposed in the ribbon. So, and then the second piece that I think is uh, immediately apparent when you use the application is this notion of this kind of enhanced storyboard. Um, when people sat down in front of in front of the competition, as well as in front of Windows Movie Maker on Windows Vista, uh, they didn't always know where to start because you, you start with kind of this empty timeline, and this notion of dragging and dropping things into a timeline and having this really kind of um, tick tick by tick based way of looking at the movie. Uh, it's very intuitive to people who know how to do it. Uh, I think if you've spent hours understanding that model, it makes a lot of sense. But what we wanted to do is make sure that when people using the application for the first time, they were able to scale as appropriate. So by that I mean when they open the application and add things to the storyboard, what happens makes sense. It adds you know, representative thumbnails of the content. If you add a song, you can see where the song starts and finishes. But you, you don't have to go, you know, fiddle with a bunch of things to understand what the end-to-end -end project looks like. It kind of just shows up there. And then if you want to go deeper, we enable things like time zoom. So in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little zoom slider. And if you change the zoom slider, you can see kind of zooming in on time or zooming back out on time. And when you do that, you can get the lengths of things start to shift based on uh, the time scale that you've set. So I think that's one fun feature that isn't always discoverable to people. Uh, and that's sort of obviously that's a, something we need to work on. But I think the, the, the notion of zooming in and zooming out on time in order to get more specific uh, is something that we looked at as, that's a perfect example of how to scale the application. You start off in a very kind of simple way, but for people who want to go deeper, they can zoom in on time and make the thumbnail smaller and kind of make it look a lot more like a timeline. Uh, so that's one thing that I, that I like. The second thing uh, is just a personal thing is the keyboard shortcuts in the application are a lot of fun. And so we've carried over the keyboard shortcuts from Windows Movie Maker. So if you, if you use JKL, uh, you can go back a frame, you can play pause or forward a frame. Uh, M does split, uh, and then you can do I and O for trim points. So you can do set trim point in, set trim point out. And so by doing that, you can, you can very quickly craft the movie you want without having to enter the trim tool. And you know, again, I think I think for people who don't know about things like the keyboard shortcuts or who aren't uh, aren't going and reading the help file to understand all this stuff, what they can do is is really quickly take a movie, look at it, click the trim tool, and trim it how they want, and it's non-destructive. And so at any point they can untrim it. But uh, for people who want to go a little bit further, we wanted to make sure that advanced users or enthusiast users had ability to do things like keyboard shortcuts and, you know, um, accessibility via the ribbon controls uh, and doing things with one one-click buttons in the ribbon.